I have one of these mini dehumidifiers. It can handle about eight ounces of water per day, so it's meant for small spaces. And this one's a ProBreeze model PB02US. There's several different ones that all look the same from different name brands, and this one doesn't work. When I turn it on, there's no activity, no fan, no power light. But if I take out the water container, as this fills up with water, this float device will come up and hit a switch to indicate it's full. So that switch is up here, and if I press this, the full light comes on. We just don't have main power. So there's the switch. So it's got power, but the unit is just not functioning, and I'm wondering if I can figure out what's wrong, and if it's even worth trying to fix. So I'm going to take it apart. I see a couple of screws here. There's two more screws on the bottom. This comes off on the top, and it looks like there's two more screws holding it in up here. There it is. So there's a DC jack for 9 volts, 2.5 amps here. I think I'm just going to have to take all this stuff out. I can't really see what's happening. But while we're here, this is based on a Peltier device. So you power that device and it gets hot on one side and cold on another. So if you use the cold to create a large surface on a heatsink, when the humid air passes over it, it will condense and drip down into the water container. So there's a heat sink to take out the heat on the hot side of that, and then the cool side here, and there's a fan to blow air on the heat sink. On the other side, we just have our power switch, and a little circuit board with not much on it, and a bunch of connectors plugged in. So I'll unplug all those to be able to access things. Looks like here's the two LEDs from the front panel, and they have a current limit resistor, and then we just have connectors, so power will be coming in on one of these. There's one called fan, and the others don't appear to be labeled. There's the board, LEDs, and I don't see anything wrong with these tracks, but I can use that to map out where those wires are going and how everything is supposed to function. This power switch was plugged in up at the top, and if this one's the fan, this one here, I'm gonna say goes to the Peltier because it's bigger, heavier duty, higher current contacts. So then this one must be going to the DC jack and that switch that tells the device when water is full. So there's that switch again for when water is full. I can't really see what's going on, so I'm going to take this whole thing out. So there's the fan, heat sink for the hot, and heat sink for the cold sides. And we do have the thicker red and black wires on this Peltier device. So the power jack wires are green and blue, going on a 5-pin connector. And the three wires on that switch Black, red, yellow are also going to the same 5-pin connector here. So this switch is all built into the plastic. Oh, wait, that slides out. Okay, I don't think I can separate stuff any better than this. So we know power is getting in here because we were seeing the tank full LED coming on when we touched the switch. And it doesn't look like there's any bad connections here. I don't see anything obvious with the wiring. Nothing looks cut, broken. So I'm just going to map out what's really happening. So this connector is going to the Peltier. This one fits in the fan connector slot. Blue and green are coming from the DC jack down here to power the board. So on this 5-pin connector we have green on the outside and black right in the center. So on the board, the top 
goes to the power switch. So when the system is on, these two pins are just going to be short circuited, connecting a path to turn everything on. So that's going to be connecting the outside to the center pin on this five pin header. So we have the green on the outside and black wire on the center. Green is one of the main incoming DC power and the black wire is going to the common terminal on this switch that gets pressed when there's too much water. So then we have a normally open and normally closed contact. So when nothing is happening on the switch, normally the center is not connected, it's open. And when the system is ready to run, the red wire is normally closed, so it's normally red connected to black. When there's too much water, now the red is disconnected, yellow is connected to the common black. So we're wondering when it's supposed to be running. The black is supposed to go to the red wire, so is that actually happening? If I probe between common and normally closed, well that's 820 or so kilo ohms, that's not a short circuit. When I close the switch, it does open. When I release the switch, that should be a short circuit, but it's almost a meg. Okay, if I probe the other normally open, it's open now. If I close the switch, five or four point something megs when it's supposed to be a closed connection. If I open, it's open. So maybe this switch is the problem. So I was going to continue tracing this out to see where everything is supposed to route when you close or open the switch, but there's probably no point at the moment in doing all of that. I'm going to try shorting these outside contacts that are supposed to be normally closed right now to operate the unit, see if I can get it to do something. So I have the power plugged in. All of the connectors are back in this board. Now I just have to figure out how to hold this all together. So before I do anything, once again, the yellow light over here should come on when I close the switch. Yeah indicating the water's full, just like when the unit was put together. But I need this other LED to come on for showing activity. And now this will be my switch. Here goes nothing. Oh, I heard the fan try to go. So now that I know it wants to operate, I'm going to see if I can get a thermocouple on here. I just want to get some kind of idea. So I've got the thermocouple I'm trying to keep it over here. So there's the temperature. It's showing 23.8 degrees C right now. If I can get this turned on. So the fan is running. Oh, I can feel that getting cold over here on this side. So our temperature is dropping. It's 21 degrees C. In this room it's 20 and a half degrees Celsius. So we're dropping rapidly. So I'm satisfied that the unit functions now. I'm going to see what I can do about this switch. Now I have to see if I can get this switch out of this custom plastic thing. Oh, so this just pulls apart. I didn't realize it was that easy. And there's plastic pegs that go through the holes in the switch, so it all holds together once it's installed. I don't have a switch right now exactly like this where it has this roller on the end of the lever. I have one similar with just a fixed feature there. Now the unit is put back together and since I didn't have the same switch with the rolling mechanism on the end at that certain height, I just used a switch with one of those tabs and I had to bend it down more until it seemed to work. So if I turn it on, there is a green light. It's faint. I think there's a light pipe in there that fell out and there's still one for yellow. So when yellow comes on, you can see it better. So when I push the switch, the yellow light comes on and the fan stops because water is full. If I let this go, it starts running. The full light goes out. So, while it's running right now, I filled this tank with water, so the float device is up. And if I insert this, the fan stops and the full light comes on because the tank is full and it's tripping that switch. So it looks like 
Somehow this switch failed and now it's working. So I'll let it actually run for real a few times, let it get up to full and make sure it really is all aligned properly so the switch is always getting triggered. And if it seems to work, maybe I will see if I have a use for it. 